My name is Sahira, and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. Hey there, Zillstar. In this video, I would like to take you through the basics of how to play the finger symbols. Getting started really isn't hard. Getting good takes practice, but you can totally do it. So let's take you through the basics that you know to get running with your finger symbols. So once you've picked out a pair of finger symbols that you love, and I highly recommend finding some whose sound makes your heart sing, because you're gonna be playing these a lot, so if for any reason you don't enjoy the sound, it's gonna be kind of painful. So get yourself a really nice pair of Zills. May I suggest Saroyan Mastercrafts if I can, because they are my favorite finger symbol maker, and I have almost all of them, <laughs> and I love them all. You can pick up your own pair at sahirabellydances.com slash Saroyan Symbols, and I'll put the link to that down below. Once you have a great pair of Zills and you have sewn your elastic on, yes, I have said sewn your elastic on, please sew your elastics on and make sure that they're nice and tight on your fingers. If you don't think you can sew, I would like to challenge that idea and refer you to my video here about how to sew your finger symbols elastic. It's really pretty easy. So I highly recommend you give that a try. Once you have the finger symbol elastic sewed on, make sure they're nice and tight so it's not gonna fall off. And now the fun begins. This is where you get to start exploring. And here are my recommendations for the beginning of your Zill exploration. First, you're gonna to want to explore making sounds and ideally making pleasant sounds, right? If I could recommend two different sounds to start with, it would be your basic ring or what I call the basic. The basic is just bringing one symbol down on top of the other for a brief connection and then drawing the middle finger symbol up to release the sound, something like this. As you do this, I encourage you to keep your fingers nice and relaxed and play with keeping your zills as close as possible so that you don't have far to travel to create that sound, but not so close that you get extraneous noise when you don't mean to, right? So I don't want to play the finger symbols open like this because that's really going to slow me down when I start wanting to go faster. And I don't want to play them so close so that they never really disconnect and I get a lot of, of you know, extra sound in between. So find that sweet spot where when you open your hand, they are not touching. You'll notice that when I open my hand, I've set my zills up to be pretty parallel to each other when I close my hand. So what I do, I put my finger symbol on my thumb and my middle finger, and then I kind of adjust so that they're flush when my hand is closed, kind of in this clamshell or clack position. When I open my fingers, they are no longer exactly parallel. If I come in for a zill close up here, you can see that there's a little bit of angle to my finger symbols. They sort of open more on the front end and are a little bit closed on the back end. Where your finger symbols lie will depend a lot on the shape of your hand, the length of your fingers, and exactly where you have that elastic placed, right? My elastic is a bit more on my uh, last knuckle. Some people wear it a little further down down towards the nail bed. Find the place that's comfortable for you, but know that when you open your zills, you definitely want them to be open enough so that whatever edge is the closest does not touch. Perhaps you do have a parallel zill situation and that's great, but if you don't, make sure that that back edge doesn't touch or else you get a lot of like messy sloppy going on in your finger symbols, which you don't want. Now we're playing with that basic ring. fun with it, play with it, see if the right hand and the left hand sound the same, right? Because your dominant hand is always going to get these sounds just a little bit better and a little bit faster than your non-dominant hand, but have patience. The other hand will get to it as well. And if I could recommend one other sound to play with right out of the starting gate, it would be the clack. And the clack, you're going to keep the upper fingers on the zill if your zill is large enough. If you have a smaller zill, maybe not all of your fingers will rest on it, but that's fine. Just relax your finger symbols so that you are muffling that top zill. The bottom zill will remain natural naturally fairly muffled, and then bringing them down straight on to each other. Once you've done that, the fun begins, right? You can play without music and just play with the sounds. Perhaps I'm going to play a few rings and a few clacks, and I'm going to try to do a little bit of movement. So let's try imagining like a little bit of a step touch, right? I'm doing a little step touch in place and I'm trying to kind of get a little bit of rhythm, right? This is where things get a little bit more challenging. Well, I want to play the finger symbols, but ideally I want them to be in rhythm with my body. So if I'm going one, 
two, one, two. Maybe my finger symbols are going to play like this. We're gonna go one, two, and three, and four, and. Let's switch to the clap. Nice job. So now, if that's feeling pretty good, you've got a little bit of rhythm going on here in the body, and you're going to then move on to do something a little bit more challenging, may I recommend that you start moving your arms. So maybe I'm going to keep that little step touch going, but I'm going to circle my arms as I play like this. Nice job. So now if you want to up the ante a little bit more, this is where I'd like to start using some belly dance movement. The easiest movements to add to your zill playing, if the zills are fairly new for you, is something smooth that is like a circle or an infinity that doesn't have a hard rhythm attached to it. So let's say I'm going to do front to back figure eights, right? So this does have a rhythm. I'm thinking one, two, three, four. But if it strays from that for now, as I'm focusing on my finger symbols, it's totally okay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and try to add the finger symbols. Here we go. Let's try that clap. Nice job. So really, this is all it takes to get started. You've got your finger symbols on, you are moving, and you are making music at the same time. Congratulations, that's the name of the game, right? You don't necessarily have to worry at the beginning about getting all of the different rhythms and all of the different sounds and putting it together with complex movement with belly dance. I would focus first on just exploring the zills and see what it is that they have to offer, explore the sounds, explore the idea of playing them while moving, and then you can let yourself ease into the idea of more complex patterns and rhythms and combinations with the dance. So I wanna hear from you, how did that go? Are you able to play the finger symbols and move at the same time? That is the first step on a lifelong journey to loving and dancing with these incredible instruments. If you would like to take your zilling to the next level and put yourself on the path to become the zill star that you were meant to be, you can join me for my free zill jumpstart course at sahirabellydances.com slash zill star. There you will go through the four basic sounds, how to count the rhythms, some of the basic and more popular belly dance rhythms, as well as how to put it together with your dancing. And if you would like to challenge yourself even more, I invite you to check out more of my videos here on YouTube. I have some very high level Zill drills that will keep you working hard and improving every step of the way. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to making music with you soon.